greatest problem with men is men are purposeless and sedated by pornography, online video games, alcohol, or marijuana. Yes, absolutely. So we're going to be watching how Rolo smacks on Dr. Phil, man. He gets down like James fucking Bram. Like, no fucking joke, bro. He's on point. <clears throat> Does not skip a beat, and it's crazy, like, how he just triggers everyone. And he is just stoic and in frame and just like a fucking man. Let's fucking get into this right fucking now. What men go for. Okay. Um, well... Uh, Rolo Tomasi is a blogger, author, and YouTuber whose 2013 book, The Rational Male, has come to be considered the unofficial Bible of the Manosphere. Now, he says everything that you hear from Andrew Tate is usually a derivative of his book and his teachings. We have women who are building themselves up according to this strong, independent female empowerment narrative. And as a result, all they've done is become the man that they wanted to marry. And guys don't want to have anything to do with that. So what do I tell them? What do I tell that chick who's 26 years old, who's probably making more money than most of the guys I know? She's an alpha male. Right? What do I tell her? Dumb yourself down? The first thing out of my mouth is, well, you need to be more feminine. Right? Get in touch with your feminine side. You've got to invest in your beauty, invest in your femininity, rather than you know, being worried about like starting some gourmet cupcake retail outlet. Because if I don't, then I'm not feminine. And then they're not going to want to get with me. Oh, well, you mean I'm going to be 38 and lonely? I guess I'll die alone? Yeah, unless you do something. And if that sounds like dumbing yourself down, then I don't really know what else to tell you. Bro, oh, welcome. Thanks, bro. Hello. Thanks for having me. Hello. So, your book yeah. and the things that you espouse yeah. predated Andrew Tate. Yeah. By about 10 years, all I do is present facts. And what happens is, is particularly now, and I've been doing this for about 20 years, um, uh, you will see a lot of come-ups right now who want to uh, take it and run with it on TikTok. They want to take it and run with it on Instagram. We live in the, uh, the social media age. And a lot of the uh, work that I've done really for about 20 years right now um, gets distorted quite a bit. And I think we're at that point right now where things are getting distorted. And again, to the point where I've got to come on the Dr. Phil show and be an apologist for, for Andrew Tate, which I am not going to do. Yeah. So Whenever, why do they call you the godfather of the Manosphere? <laughs> the Manosphere is sort of a consortium of guys who get together and they compare notes. So the Manosphere proper started right around, uh, I would say, 2002 in forums. Um, it uh, developed and evolved out of the old pickup artist seduction community uh, forums that were online at that time. And then it developed into the blog era, and then it developed into the uh, social media era, and now here we are in the YouTube era. And um, it's been, like I said, about 20 years coming right now, but the Manosphere proper is, um, is a consortium of guys who get together and they compare notes about really three main things, money, muscles, and game. So, and by game, I use game in the terms of social skills at this point. So, and these pickup artist sites that you're talking about, people were putting up websites and all about how to pick up women. That originally it was discussions on forums where men all over the world would get together and say, let's compare notes. Let's compare notes. Let's get together and let's see if we can figure this out. Well, I've seen a lot of seminars and stuff where you can sign up and take a course and they, guarantee you if you have trouble getting dates or picking up women they tell you that they guarantee you you take this course you'll date the hottest girl in the room and i don't know anyone that is guaranteeing that at this stage i don't think anybody has ever guaranteed that however if there is a benefit and net benefit for that it is a fact that you can take a guy such as ben here and level him up from, say, a five to a six. Is that not an improvement? If you went from being ordinary to being somewhat extraordinary, is that not a net benefit to a, to a gentleman like Ben here? You say the greatest problem with men is men are purposeless mm -hmm. and sedated by pornography, video. online video games, alcohol, or marijuana. Yes, absolutely. What do you mean sedated by? How old are you? 
24. Yeah, 24. 24 years old. So we're looking at a gen, gen, so gen Z. You're looking at a generation that was acculturated and socialized behind a screen. We have a, a, a generation of what we call lost boys right now who don't have a father figure. They don't have, they don't have any guidance, whether, it, whether it's masculinity or much else for that matter. And so, of course, if I can say, hey, look, uh, I've got, I'm an older gentleman and I can help level you up and common sense is so rare right now we can commodify it, <laughs> then I'm going to go and do my best to help men. I'm not in the business of helping men become better men. I'm in the business of helping men have the tools and the equipment so that they can build their own lives. You, you say the greatest problem with men is men are purposeless mm -hmm. and sedated by pornography, online video games, alcohol, or marijuana. Yes, absolutely. Um, what do you mean sedated they're, by? They're escapisms is what they are. If your crummy life is, uh, if your escapisms are better than your crummy life, then you're going to dwell more in those escapisms. So what do men do today where they're addicted to pornography? Anyone in this room on their, on their phone can go get hardcore pornography anytime they want to. There's a reason why it's free. If you go and you look at uh, marijuana being, um, being legalized, if you look at the opioid epidemic right now, if you look at the way we sedate men today, that is the number one, I think anyways, is the number one problem that we're looking at for really the latter half of the millennial generation and all of Generation Z right now. Yeah, and you, you talk about that the suicide rate for men is three to three and, three and, and a half, half to, five, to five, times five times, depending on whose is. numbers you're looking at and what the than it is for women, mm -hmm. and you interpret that as meaning what? I interpret that as meaning that those are deaths of despair. We have, we have a term for that right now. Men get zeroed out. They build up lives, they build up personalities, they build up um, what life equity, let's just say. They lose a job, they lose their, well, their wives, they lose out on something, and no one is there to tell them how to bounce back from that rejection, how to bounce back from that defeat, how to come back from being zeroed out. So they're faced with two really very real decisions. One is rebuild yourself or delete yourself. And unfortunately, most men are deleting themselves right now. Most men are deleting themselves. What, what? Well, the prime demographic for suicide for men right now is 45 to 65 years old. It's, it's what they call deaths of despair. Um, we, we constantly harp on the fact that men don't have friends, they don't have close friends, they don't have the same networks that women do. Um, and then we put the blame for their mental health back on them by saying it's toxic masculinity and if you guys were just more like women, then you would reach out for therapy of some sorts. If women were killing themselves at four times the rate that men are, you would have a dedicated month and the NFL would change their uniforms to pink or something else so that we would have some sort of female suicide prevention month. But we don't see that right now because we blame it on toxic masculinity. What do you mean when you say media celebrates masculinity as equaling acting feminine? Well, that's the only time that the, the mainstream media will ever celebrate masculinity is when you see the rock in a tutu. Whenever you see, um, whenever you see men Here's behaving balance, conventionally right. feminine, that's when the media decides to celebrate it. But yet when a guy is acting in a conventionally masculine way, we do not celebrate that and we find some way to demonize that. And what's conventionally masculine? Men are by and large, in, in a general sense, 99.9% .9 uh, larger, more muscular, more physically adept than women are. So we can look at what are the traits that are, that are associated with that, but, you know, determinism, uh, determination. How are men more well, determined than well, women? Men, well, ment mentally speaking, um, if you look at um, the differences, the genetic differences between men and women, men tend to be more interested in things. Women tend to be more interested in people. Women tend to be in the social fields. Men tend to be in the more mechanical fields. So if there's a conventional masculinity, it's related to the way that our brains are structured. It doesn't have anything to do with social, social constructionism. Yeah. Right, well, when we come back, we're going to meet a father who says men have been left behind. We'll be right back. Okay. Now... Rolo is 
fucking on point, man. He is bringing the fucking heat. And I just like, it's, oh my God. You know, this is like what we need <clears throat> because I am so happy he did this because otherwise we're going to get other femboys, soy boys who are going to like represent the red pill in a very, very like fucked up way. In a way that it's, you know, not the way that should be represented. And Rolo, he is the godfather to represent it. And I love that he's doing this. He is so on point like right now. It's fucking crazy. Monday on an all new Dr. Phil. My daughter is addicted to social media. His teenage son shot him and then killed his mother because they took away the violent video game Daniel was addicted to. That's Monday. Closed captioning provided by. Have you. I have had opportunities to cheat for pretty much my entire marriage. The healthiest way to have a good marriage is to have opportunity, but she gives you no reason, and so she takes care of you. Now, there's a lot of other guys who are in the same boat, right? They are with a woman who takes care of them, even though they have the opportunity to cheat. Those guys, the women that they're with, realize that that guy is the kind of guy that other men want to be and other women want to be. And so, as there's that hindbrain realization of that, prompts behavior on the part of that woman to say, you know what, he's a good dog, but I got to pet him to keep him on the porch. Well, parents today say they're more worried about their sons becoming successful adults than their daughters. So what's troubling young men today? Now, I brought together some people who presume to know about this because they spent time looking into it. Richard Reeves is a senior fellow at the Brookings Institute and wrote the book of Boys and Men, Why the Modern Male is Struggling, Why It Matters, and What to Do About It. Now, Marilyn York is a men's rights attorney, and Imran Ahmed is a CEO and the founder of the Center uh, for Countering Digital Hate. So thanks to all three of you for joining the conversation. <laughs> Marilyn, let me start with you. You've been listening so far. What do you have to add to the conversation before I ask you any specific questions? Anytime a man tries to interpret a woman, it's embarrassing. And anytime we try to interpret a man, it's embarrassing. Like, we need to stay in our lane a little bit more. When I hear a man telling me what I want as a woman, there's just some misconceptions being thrown about as though the generalities are true. And we're missing a huge component of relationships that's a really important one, and that's intimacy. We're talking all about prestige, and relationships have two components at their very base, intimacy and prestige. And every relationship at its core is a mix of the two. Even take the super old rich guy and the super young hot girl, there is a component of intimacy to their relationship that works for them. In addition to the prestige that comes with his success and his monetary gain and her beautiful body and her youth. And so I feel like we're missing it and we're doing a disservice to both genders. And the other thing is it always feels like a gender battle. Like it's always men versus women. And even at home, I cannot talk about this with my own husband. I cannot talk about men's rights with him. I want to kill him in about 30 seconds. And I'm like, I'm on your team. Like I represent dudes and I hate you. And I'm never extreme enough for him. And he likes to spew facts at me. Like men are always guilty when the police come. I'm like, what? Who? Have you been arrested? I, last time I checked, you've never even been investigated. What do, you, what do you mean this always happens? He's like, you know it's true. It's a fact. I'm like, oh my God, it's a fact again. And I do know it's true. I actually watch my poor male clients get arrested for ridiculous stuff all day. I can give you 100 case studies that would break your heart. But when he says that, I want to deck him. And why? Why does it have to be that way? Why can't I just calm down and listen and not be in competition? And I can't. I fail, at least at home. I'll try to do better for you, doctor. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Tell me if you're going to deck me right before you do it, right? <laughs> now, Richard, what do you think about Andrew Tate? <laughs> well, first of all, everybody has heard of Andrew Tate. Uh, certainly everybody who's under the age of 40. He had 12 billion views on TikTok. He was searched four times as much as recession, uh, for example. And so people know who he is. <clears throat> And I think I was actually listening to, to Ben earlier, and I have three, three sons in their 20s as well. I've got to tell you, the paternal instinct in me was coming out very, very strongly listening to you. Uh, I really felt where you were coming from. But I also think the fact we're having this conversation this way tells us what a horrible mess we've got ourselves into. It is quite true that we don't have a positive vision 
of masculinity that we're passing on, but it has to be one that is compatible with equality between men and women. We need a positive script that we can give to our boys, and I've tried to raise my sons this way, but not one that in any way makes seem women seem lesser. We don't have to make women seem less for men to be more. And that's great. And, and, and some, of, some, of what you say, some of what you say has some real truth to it. There are some biological differences between us, but they're not determinative. They don't determine your role. You say the biological role. Women, women are designed to bear children. Well, duh. I think most women know that they bear children, but that doesn't mean that that's their destiny. That's an idea we left behind in the 19th century. And so we've got to find a way to have a really positive script for our boys that is different to femininity. I agree with that. There are differences. But it's got to be one that's fit for the 21st century. And I've got to tell you, that means one that absolutely looks women in the eye as our absolute equals. Even if we're different in some important ways, we are absolutely equal. Our relationships have to be built on that equality. So let's, let's get on with the task of a positive script for masculinity that is not anti-women. Yes. Do you think that's possible? Let's get on with the task of a positive script for masculinity that is not anti-women. Yeah. Yes. Do you think that's possible? No, I think, uh, I think equality is a canard right now. <laughs> equality is defined by what? See, the thing about equal it is, opportunities. Okay, equal opportunities. A but female yet, president. But yet, okay. Female, women on college campuses. Okay, so equal those pack. are equality of outcome right now, right. not equality of opportunity. We have right. equality of opportunity. What you're, what, um, on this side of the fence, anyway, is, is advocating for is equality of outcome. And that's the real problem that we're looking at right now. The other part of this is that what is equality defined by? So if I have certain strengths, that make me better at a particular task, right. and you do not, then, I, then there's no equality between the two of us, if you can see what I'm saying here. Okay, this is the right argument. So. Can, I, can I respond? Sure. This is the right argument. So you mentioned the difference between men and women in terms of men being a bit more into things mm -hmm. and women being a bit more into people. Yes, I believe you quoted right. Dr. Pinker in your own book. Yes, and that's true. But it's not true that all men are into things and all women are into people. But the more distribution are than are yes. not. On so what the that suggests, curve. based on work that I've looked at, is that under conditions of equal opportunities, you wouldn't have 50% of engineers would be women. It would be about 30% of engineers would be women. Mm. Right now, it's 15%. Now, you might say, well, of course only 15% of engineers are women. Their brains don't work like that. Whereas I would say, I think we've got quite a long way to go. I have a question about what y'all are going back and forth about. So what? What the hell difference does it make? What's that have to do with equality? The fact that if men are more into right. things and women are, are more into... Let me choose. Yeah. What, what difference? So what? What does that have to do with equality? Because look, I've, I've been married 46 years. I've been with my wife for 50 years. We've been married 46. And we are not alike in so many ways. But let me tell you, I don't want to be married to me. <laughs> I, I guarantee you. I think we can you, all agree. Yeah, no <laughs> <laughs> That's I don't unanimity be, on that. Point. No, I don't want to be married to someone that thinks like I do, acts like I do, behaves like I do. I don't want to be married to a mirror image of myself. But I think I want to be married to somebody that is different. But that doesn't mean that one of us they, is they is more or oh, less than the other right. person. All we I'm, just bring different I'm, ingredients I'm to the table. Agree. All I'm arguing is these are differences on average. And they're going to differ in different places. Parts. Richard's talking about but we are equality to one when it comes to opportunity, which I agree with. And Rolo's talking about equality when it comes to outcomes, which he says, you know, we can't predict and we can't create. But I think there, Rolo wants it for men. There are I think things, you want outcomes for men to improve. Yeah, there you are, just start well, about I, female what, outcomes. Okay, what I would like to see is, is for, especially for men, is a, a, a focus on it, for a, a focus on masculinity to begin with yes. at all. Because we can't even have this conversation. Right. We could not have this conversation at a major university in the United States right now without somebody shouting. Hang on, hang on. Uh, let me interrupt because uh, I want to. I want you guys to know who Imran is. Uh, he was instrumental in taking Tate down from YouTube. Thank you. Uh, why was that important to you? Because the ideas that he spread are toxic to the young men that he's primarily being fed into. The TikTok algorithm is set up in a way that it feeds you the most controversial content first. 
Andrew Tate himself understands the algorithm in the way that digital natives do. Mm -hmm. Within two and a half minutes of opening a new TikTok account, you're being fed Andrew Tate videos. Mm -hmm. And that's why he's one of the most seen men in the world, talking about men. And the problem is that the ideology that he, of course, is based on yours, Rollo, mm -hmm. which is, you know, one way of looking at the world, mm -hmm. I don't think it necessarily leads to great outcomes for people. I don't think it leads to great outcomes for relationships. Oh my God, the is problem that is that your ideology, your ideology is phenomenally reductive and ultimately it what? leads yeah. to failure. Wow. And yet and I've been responsible ideas, for those taking ideas, the noose off of millions of men's necks and those for, the ideas, last, for the last 12 years. Those ideas when amplified, when, when, when added with the social media overlay of controversy, it's led to lots and lots of young men being and taught by Andrew Tate that the re way to treat a woman if she disrespects you is to grab her by the neck and grab a machete. Again, I'm not here to be an apologist for someone who has taken my work and distorted it into his red meat social media empire. What do you mean you took the noose off of men? What do you, what do you mean? Wow. Is there... What do you mean you took the noose off of men? What do you, what do you mean? What I'm saying is that I've, I've been... Well, my work has been at least in some way instrumental in preventing suicides. It causes harm to women. You talk about suicide. What's the primary Look, cause of young women dying in, the, in America? You tell me, man. Partner violence. Yeah, because men are violent. We have a proclivity for violence. We have you better have trait great aggression than we do agreeable. You, have this, you okay. claim to have this great compassion for young men yeah. who you say are harming themselves. And yet, when I say to you that the greatest, that the thing that's killing young women is men, you sneer with such anger at me, and you, you know say to what, me, "Do you know what actually the, men you know are killed number one themselves. way of men? So men are killing right men, now. and men are killing women too. It's not suicide; it's right. a male on male That's violence it. as yeah. well." We've got some audience members listening to all this, and I see some of you really squirming. If you got a comment or question, raise. My name is Melissa, and I was just thinking how you were saying that, you know, women are more likely to be this way and men are more likely to be this way. But a lot of it is we are raised to be that way and we, without even having a choice. So I don't understand where the, you're coming from with that. Okay, that's because you believe in social constructionism as a primary way of socializing human beings right now. You have natural proclivities as a woman, as a man that are going to express themselves regardless of societies across the board. It's not all socialization, if, if anything. The nature versus nurture discussion in that debate has been over since the mid 2000s. Nothing is all or nothing, right. is what I'm trying to say. Exactly, but what I'm so. saying is that you're, you have innate proclivities as a woman, as a man, that are going to express themselves. So again, as I was saying, in gender neutral societies, men are going to lean one way, women are going to lean another way. It's not because they were taught that way, it's because that that's what their natural innate inclination is. All right, we're out of time uh, for today, oh. but we'll be continuing this conversation. You won't want to miss our next discussion on this topic when we talk to a group of teenage boys and their mothers about Andrew Tate and toxic masculinity. Their mothers were surprised by what they heard, and trust me, you will be too. I mean, Rolo, he fucking was on point, man. He was a fucking savage on Dr. Phil. Like, and you could tell they were just trying so hard, especially that femboy um, guy who said he was the reason why he canceled. Man, damn, man, fuck that dude, bro. Like, what the fuck, man? He looks like a fucking pussy too, man. Like, come on now. Like, if we do not. Like, that's not the guy to be a good representative of male. He's the one who's probably telling the other guys to be vulnerable and share your feelings. We don't need that shit. We don't need to be telling young boys it's okay to dress up like girls. It's okay to wear makeup. It's okay. I remember when I was a kid, because I have an older sister, I was like, I wanted to like uh, wear makeup as a kid. I remember I wanted to, because my sister would do it, and I thought, oh, okay, I want to try it. I want to try it. And my dad was so pissed, like, no, fuck, no, fuck, no. And I would cry and cry and cry, and yeah. So, <clears throat> and I'm glad he did that. I'm 100% glad he did that, because, like, shit, who knows how the fuck it would have turned out. Like, fuck, you know? But, yeah, there needs to be a male authority figure to... You know, hey man, you're a boy. Boys don't do that. Boy, you know, like 
you need that authority figure like i mean i don't understand why that's that's so wrong like there's a reason why kids have parents to guide them to be the best they can be you know like i mean at some point you know the kid has to take responsibility of his own actions you know we can't blame anyone but yourself that's why i kind of hate when people oh my environment my so you know the people i was around you know dictate my life the reason why you know i suck i'm fat i'm a loser was because my my social my society they told me to be this way they told me to love myself fuck you man you're at where you're at because of you and the poor choices you made 100 percent. take accountability into your fucking actions right there but anyways that's gonna be the video guys and <clears throat> <clears throat> fucking Rolo Tomasi, man. He's a fucking godfather, bro. Buy his fucking books, man. Buy his fucking books. I'm gonna start reading this one right now. Religion. Fucking gem. Remember, guys, don't be a pussy. Stay macho. Be macho. Do something macho. Peace. <laughs>